Hey, it's Kim. And if you've noticed from the title of this video, today I'm gonna be going through my ink collection. And I've been needing to do this for a very long time. I have a lot of inks. Um, um, I have the camera pulled back a, a little bit so you can see the bottles that I have, the samples, well you can kind of see all the samples that I have. And I try to separate and organize them by brand. So that's what we're doing here. But I've needed to do this for so long. I used to, um, when I first got into fountain pens, swatch my inks inside of like a spiral notebook, a Rhodia dot pad, actually. And then aside from the sheer laziness uh, that stopped me from doing it regularly when I would acquire new inks, I did find that that wasn't extremely helpful and I'll tell you why. So I like to compare the colors. Um, for instance, I had like a gray phase, so I like to compare all of the grays that I have against one another to see exactly which one I like. I went through a brown phase, so on and so forth. So I needed to be able to hold the swatches next to each other so I could compare them like side by side. So if I was doing the samples inside of my notebook just when I acquired them, then it wouldn't necessarily make it easy for me to do that in a spiral notebook if the for instance three gray swatches were like several pages apart so i thought it would be great to be able to do this inside of a ring system or like a ring bound planner so that's when i had this idea also like i said i was using a rhodia dot pad and that one um, is different is a different kind of paper from the papers that I normally write on. I normally write in a Hobonichi Cousin or even my journals are all Tomoe River paper and certain colors actually show up differently on different types of paper. So I wanted to be able to see the samples on the actual paper that I would be using. So that required me to need to do this on a different kind of paper as well. So fast forward and I had the bright idea to use this. Um, this is a pocket size planner, pocket size Mia Cara by Giglio that I'm not currently using at the moment. So I'm going to use this inside piece and I had already had some Tomoe River paper that I cut down into pocket plus size. I believe this is pocket plus size. So what I'm going to do is use those to swatch out all of the colors that I have. I'm actually hoping I should have enough sheets, I think. Um, if not, I do have some extras here, but I believe, are these? I think these might be yellow. The um, ivory colored Tomoe River paper. Yeah, and this is the white. So we'll see if I need to bring out extra papers. But this is where we're going to start. And I'm set up at my desk and I'm hoping that you can kind of see pretty well. I'll walk you through the other tools that I'll be using. And I'm not going to swatch inside of this for fear that I would like get ink on it or something. So I'll just take out all of the sheets of paper and set that to the side. But what that's gonna do after I get all of my samples pulled out together and swatched, I'll be able to put them in some kind of color order, which I feel like would be very beneficial and very useful for me when I'm deciding exactly which color I want in a particular pen. So the other tools that I'm using today are um, this glass dip pen. I got this from Amazon. I'll try to link it below if I can. And also this dip pen, which is made by Pilot. I recently got this from Jet Pens. Uh, the reason for two of them, and I actually did talk about this in a recent planner or stationery haul that I did on my channel, so you can check that out if you like. Um, but the reason why I got this is because this dip pen writes in more of a medium, maybe even like a broad tip kind of point, especially depending on the ink. I feel like if it's a wetter ink, it comes off a little broad and most of my pens are actually fine or extra fine. 
so that doesn't really show me exactly what the ink is going to look like when I'm writing in it like for everyday use. So I decided to get this pilot one since it does come in a fine. So I will be swatching the colors in both pens or with both pens um, because if you know about um, fountain pen ink sometimes there's shading that you might see or different shading depending on how thick the line is when you're writing so some colors may show better maybe in a medium point than it would in a fine point uh so i'd like to just see what they look like in the different uh nib sizes <laughs> that's the word i was looking for all right so we're gonna get started and i'm going to film all of this um, I'm not going to talk through everything, but I'm going to film me doing all the swatches. I'm sure I'll speed it up. And then we're going to flip through the collection of swatches together. Um, before I get started, I'll tell you that I have this section over here. Oh, and I'm pulled out as far as I can. So I have this section over here, which are all Sailor Shikiori. And then, well, do you need to know? I don't know. And then these up here are Colorverse swatches and all of these little swatches I got from Goulet pens that's a really good site if you want ink samples before committing to a full bottle and then we have Diatrementis both of these are document ink I believe Diatrementis also has an archive ink um, so these three I have a couple of noodlers inks two full bottles and then two samples and then a lot of diamine or diamine um, and then I've got a couple of Robert Oster, some J. Urban, Platinum, just one. And then all of these Pilot Orochizuku colors. A couple of bottles and a lot of samples. I think I'm going to do kind of like a swab, so to speak, of the actual color. So I can kind of see how it pulls. And then start writing. So as I mentioned, I'm going to go in with both dip pens. So I've got this glass one whose nib is a little broader than I normally like. And now I'm realizing that it may be helpful to have paper with uh, lines on it. <laughs> but we'll see. So this one's Diatrementis Document Ink. And we'll do the obligatory swirls and dashes and lines. This is the ink that I use in my Pilot Vanishing Point pen. And this is the one that I use every single day. Um, I absolutely love it. I can also highlight over it, which is also another reason why I like to use it. It doesn't smear the way most other fountain pen inks smear okay so now that that one's done and I think I'm gonna zoom in even a little bit more I'm learning as we're going so now that that one's done I'm going to rinse this off and then switch to the fine tip pen and this is actually the first time I've used it this um, fine point dip pen Ah, so this is interesting um, so it kind of holds the ink right there in the back and then it comes out okay so what else should I do I guess more dashes and swirls I had the idea to write uh, one of those I can't think of the name of it I'm actually gonna look it up but you know like one of those sentences that supposedly uses all of the letters in the alphabet or at least most of the letters in the alphabet that's what I'm going to do because I only want one of these little sheets of paper per color 
Okay, so what I'm thinking of is called a pangram. And yes, I'm Googling this right now. So it's a sentence using all the letters in the alphabet. And pangram is from the Greek and it stands for every letter. So a common one is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So let's use that one. If I could spell. Okay. Oh, and as I was saying, so I want this whole page just to be for one color. And I was thinking that I might, um, like if I switch a pen and I want to kind of test what it looks like, I might use the swatch pages for that. I don't, I don't think I would honestly, but that is an option. So that like this extra space that I have down here, I could use specifically for that. All right, so now that that one's done, I'm gonna move on to the other Diatromentus inks and I'm gonna set up the entire flow the same. So I'll do a swab with the end of the thicker dip uh, pen and then I'm gonna write out the name of the ink and test some strokes and then I'll use the finer nib dip pen to do some strokes as well as a pangram or sentence using all of the letters in the alphabet. And I just realized I didn't do the little squirrels with the fine pen, but that's okay. So let's throw on some music, get set up with the next color, and let's do this. So those are all of my Diatromentus swatches and I'm pretty pleased with them. So now I'm going to go through another group of inks and speed it through and it looks like I'm not going to escape this project unscathed. Um, I will have ink all over <laughs> but that's okay. super pretty I don't even know if you can tell but it does definitely have like a sheen to it 
like a gold sheen. You can see it in the little swatch that I did there. It's really cool. I am finally finished with all of the samples. This took so much longer than I anticipated. I did not run out of paper. I had a decent amount left. Um, I think this one's still drying, so I will move that over there. My hands look crazy with all the ink, but that is quite all right, of course. So I have all of my samples here, and I tried to keep it consistent in terms of what I put on each page on each little sample page so what I'm going to do now is sort them into like the color categories I'm thinking we'll do like a Roy G Biv type thing red orange yellow green blue Biv indigo violet <laughs> but then of course we have browns and blacks to add to that as well so I'm going to sort them and then put them into order into my um pocket planner this one that we talked about here and then we'll sit down together and walk through all of them all of the swatches are completed and in full disclosure it's been about two weeks since i filmed the first part of this video where you saw me putting all of the swatches down onto the tomo river paper because as you can tell it's in a completely different planner setup i decided um that Instead of using the leather um, Giglio pocket planner to put all of these into, maybe I should use something that if I did by chance get ink on it, I wouldn't be so upset and destroyed. <laughs> so I decided to get one of these smaller pocket planners. I got this from Amazon. I think it was about $7 or so. If anyone is interested, I can link it down below. It's not the best vinyl planner I've ever seen but I did want something with gold rings so it wasn't that easy to find one with gold rings um, and I didn't need anything that was super thick or super large I believe this is 16 millimeter rings so I knew that I wouldn't need you know something like 30 millimeter which I have seen a clear vinyl 30 millimeter pocket planner before but I felt like that would be way too big for the purposes I'm using it for so I am going to take you through or walk you through all of the swatches that I laid down. Uh, but before that, I would like to show you that I have all of these little stickers in here. And these are by Stalogy. They're kind of like washi dots, washi stickers. And my plan was to use these in order to mark each of the dividers. So I do have these divided out and I have these clear... Um, acrylic dividers that I cut down using some stuff that I just had in my stash so I cut them down to pocket size and they have 
like a bit of a tab up at the top and I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to cut the tabs down, how I wanted to mark them. And also it's important to note, so this is a pocket size planner. The paper sizes that I'm using are pocket plus. So because of that, or for that reason, there's not a lot of space on the side for side tabs, which is why I cut these little dividers down to have top tabs. So anyway, so that's what they are. And I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to label each, but my thought was just to put like a red little dot on the divider for the red inks, orange for the orange inks, yellow for the yellow inks, so on and so forth. You get my drift. So I haven't done that just yet. I will definitely post update videos about this entire fountain pen ink system that I have going on because I do plan to do the occasional currently inked video. And then that leads me to the next part that I have included in this setup. So this is a small notebook that I got from Good Ink Impressions on, and you can find, well actually I'll link Good Ink Impressions down below. And this is a Tomo River paper. I believe it is, I think it's the 68 GSM, yes. So I ordered the thicker GSM and I also ordered it to be four millimeter grid. So I'm going to use this to swatch my currently inked so let's say i do it monthly or quarterly or so i'll keep a track or i'll keep track or a record of that also what i want to do so if i have an ink or a pen i want to document which inks are in which pens for instance let's say so my current pen that i'm using daily at the moment because i actually sent back my uh, Pilot Vanishing Point for repairs. So I'm using this one, the Kuridos, uh Platinum Kuridos, and it is a retractable pen. That's why I'm using it. I kind of like, you know, the quickness and the ease of just being able to push the little clicker and start writing. So for instance, if I want to document how this pen writes with different inks, so I would write down right now, or I would have just like a single page for each pen. So this one would be for my platinum pen and then I write down what ink I'm using here and a little bit of a swatch and then if I filled this with a different ink then I would come back here and swatch or write down a little writing sample to show what that ink looks like in this specific pen. I do find that information extremely helpful especially if the ink is maybe like a wetter ink or a drier ink. I may not like that in an extra fine pen or it may write the best in an extra fine pen. So that's something that I would like to keep track of and that's why I also felt that this little pocket size notebook would come in handy. This is not pocket size, I should say. This is passport size. So it's three and a half inches by five inches, if I'm not mistaken. And I just have it clipped here using this large paper clip. And I just have the back clipped right in there. So that is what my current setup for this little ink planner is. All right, so now that all of that is out of the way, how about we get into the specific ink swatches? All right, so the first one, as you can see, is diamine or diamine, I'll pronounce it diamine, oxblood. And this is one of the very well-known red ink colors. As you can see, it is reddish, almost bordering on maroon kinds of color. And for whatever reason, it was one of the first red inks that I did purchase, and I didn't love it. I think because it has some of the brown undertones, I wasn't wowed by it in any kind of way. So this is one that I do have a sample of. And on all of my swatch pages, you'll see I did the large swatch over here in the top right to just see if there's any shading or color changing properties to the inks and then wrote out with, which I explained earlier in the video, but <laughs> I wrote out with the glass dip pen that I have and then the fine pilot dip pen down here at the bottom just to see any variances with a thicker nib or a thinner nib. So that's the Diamine Oxblood. And I do find that most Diamine inks are very good in just about all fountain pens. I wouldn't call them very wet or very dry or anything of the sort. I think amongst each other, some seem to be more viscous or kind of flow better than others. And this is one that I feel is a little bit 
wetter than other diamine inks and this one is writer's blood this one I actually really really do love it is more of a burgundy type of ink so much darker than the oxblood not much but a little bit darker than the oxblood and it is one of my favorite inks um, I always have my diamond mini my Twisby diamond mini inked with this ink my orange ink section and I don't have a lot here. I do have this one from Colorverse. This one is called Brunch Date. It's more of a coral kind of color and it's not one that I love. So I have one sample set of Colorverse inks and I find that all of them are a little pale or much paler than I would prefer in an ink. Um, so this is a coral color as I said and you can see the properties of that ink there. So based on that sample that I have or the, the collection of samples from Colorverse that I have, I don't love them, but I think it might be because they're all pale ink colors. Here's another very popular color. It's called the Diamine, um, it's called Ancient Copper by Diamine. And a lot of people like this one. I actually did not love it. Maybe, I honestly don't know why I didn't love it. <laughs> But it's just not one that I would buy a full bottle of. And then for whatever reason, I guess because I feel like orange easily fades into browns, I now start it with my brown colors. So here's a Colorverse Coffee Break. And I have the same complaint as the others. I feel like it writes very pale or very light, much lighter than I would prefer. Now as for um, drying properties of any of these inks, I will say that I don't write a lot with most of these inks. When I get to some of the ones that I do write with and some that I have noticed, whether they dry fast or slow, I will be sure to mention that. But I also do want to note that I am left-handed and because of that, my hand may like drag across whatever I did write. So it is important for me to have an ink that will dry fairly quickly. With that said, I do also have blotting papers. So I do find that blotting paper is essential when you're dealing with fountain pens and fountain pen ink. I'll talk more about that in a bit. So here's a J Herbon ink that I don't really use. I've never used it actually. This is the first time I even cracked it open to swatch and I think it's a really pretty brownish color with some red undertones. And this is a Diamine Chocolate Brown. This is another color or another ink that I keep constantly inked in one of my pens. It is a brown that I really do love. I tend to gravitate towards inks that look really dark, inks that look almost black but just have a bit of some kind of interesting color to them. This is a Sailor Shikiori Do You and I believe it's supposed to be almost like a black with a brownish undertone. I don't love this color ink so I never did get around to buying a full bottle of this one. And now we're into our green section. And this is another example of the Colorverse colors that I do have. And as you can see, this is a good example of how it writes pale, which is what I was explaining. So I don't know if it's because of my eyes or what it is, but I tend to like colors that write really dark. And then this is my current favorite green. It's Diamine Sherwood Green. And it does write nice and dark. And, but it shows to be a true green. It doesn't look too black. This is Diatramentus Document Ink and I do have a love affair with <laughs> Diatramentus Document Inks. Um, this was a color I wanted to try out, green gray, and I do really like it actually. I'm not sure if I would ever get around to buying a full bottle of it, but it is one that I certainly like and I do appreciate that the document inks are waterproof or at least very very water resistant so that means you can highlight over the top of it should you need to. Another J Urban ink and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly I may or may not be but that's okay. Um, Vert Empire or Empire. I, I'm not going to do the French the French pronunciation just not going to do it. <laughs> I could probably try it. I had some, some years of French, but I'm not going to do it. So Vert Empire is what I'm going to call it. And this is a very pretty green. 
And here we have Sailor Shikiori Rikiucha. Again, my pronunciations will probably be terrible, but that's okay. So this one is called Tea Green Brown. I think that's the name of it. And it's a really pretty ink color. This swatch I feel like doesn't quite do it justice when you write with it it almost looks like an olive brown or olive green type of color with some brown undertones and that's a really nice ink now we're getting into my blue section diamine marine which is a very pretty color this is a turquoise and mm, I'm not a huge fan of turquoise colors but this is a really pretty one I'm also I'm actually not a fan of blue colors blue ink colors but um, since I've been playing around with fountain pen inks I have come to love and appreciate some of them and you'll see my favorite coming up so this is a pilot Arusha Zuko and Arusha Zuko and I do feel like pilot can do no wrong when it comes to inks pilot and sailor are some of my most favorite inks. I feel like they perform well in just about any pen. The colors are always beautiful. They have some nice shading and all of that. So those are inks that I feel are very reliable for the type of writing experience that I like. Here's another color verse, Rainy Day. Um, going back to the Pilot and the Sailor inks, they also do dry very quickly for my left hand itself. I did mention that using blotting paper is essential with fountain pen inks. However, maybe it's because I'm a little lazy. I would prefer not to have to use blotting paper. So if there are inks like Sailors and Pilots that I find that I don't usually have to use blotting paper with, that is a win in my book. And this is one of my most favorites. It's, it's um, Sailor Ink Studio color 162. And you can tell by this swatch, the shading is just amazing. So it writes almost like a turquoise kind of color. Sometimes it writes as like a darker bluish color and it has some purple and pink undertones. I feel like the camera is not even picking up all of what this ink does, but many of the Sailor Ink Studio colors do this and I would love to add a lot more to my collection. Here's Diamine Aurora Borealis. This is another really good teal color that presents a lot darker when you do write with it so it's just nice and interesting it's something outside of just boring black but it writes really dark so that you can read it and it just gives a fun twist because it's that dark teal kind of color and speaking of dark teal this is another one Diatramentus document ink and plum I do have a full bottle of this one and this one I love and it's because it's that same thing like it almost looks black so it can be, you know, I guess kind of professional should you need it in a professional setting. But it has a bit of interest with that deep teal undertone. Oh, and this is one of those inks that are supposed to smell like the name. So it's supposed to smell like a plum. It smells a little fruity. Um, I wouldn't say that I would sniff it and be like, oh, plums. But I mean, I don't know. It has a good smell. Now this is my favorite blue ink and I absolutely know that the camera is not doing this justice at all. This is Pilot Arushizuku and the color is Kompeki and it's almost like a fluorescent kind of blue but not super bright. It's a really interesting blue and this is my favorite. So this is an ink that I always have um, inked up in one of my fountain pens. Currently it's my iridescent Koveco. And it keeps this ink in it all the time and I truly do love it. It's one that I keep in my rotation for journaling and for jotting down quick notes. If I like to maybe um, add a highlight or some little notations, I'll do that with a colored ink because whatever I'm writing might be mostly black ink. But then if I want to add a little notation, I'll do it in a color similar to this one. That will draw my eye to it and kind of highlight whatever it is that I'm writing. This one's Pilot Arushizuko Sukiyo, a very nice blue as well. Asagao, not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but also Pilot Arushizuko. And they make a, um, a lot of nice blue colors in this Pilot Arushizuko line. So if you are into blues, you might want to check those out. This is another popular one. 
and this one is Shinkai. It's a bluish kind of color, has some purpley and almost grayish undertones. And then Diamine Oxford Blue. So if there are blues that I do like, they are more on the blue black kind of line. So inks that pretty much look black, <laughs> but they have a little bit of blue. And this Diamine Oxford Blue is a classic blue black color. It's very nice. Noodler's 54th Massachusetts. I actually got a sample of this thinking it was a blue black kind of color, but I don't find that to be true. At least if you don't write with it in a very um, wet pen or a very broad nib. It doesn't really show up as dark as it does, say, for instance, right up there. Um, but I do like it. It's like a blue with some interesting grayish undertones. And it is a very pretty ink. And I do find that most Noodler's inks write very wet. So these are ones that I tend to notice don't dry very quickly especially if I'm trying to write over it pretty fast so do keep that in mind but Noodler's inks can be really good if you do have an, um, a pen that maybe has a very fine nib um, that might be scratchy with drier inks you could try out a Noodler's ink because they are a lot wetter and put down more ink on the page so the pen might not feel as scratchy for you this is another of my favorites. I do have a full bottle of this one. This is probably my favorite blue-black ink, and it's Sailor Shikiori Shimoya. And this is another classic blue-black ink, Robert Oster Thunderstorm. I found this ink to be a little bit dry, which is why my sample is almost unused, and I don't intend to buy a full bottle of this color however it is very nice um, and if you are in need of a pen um, or if you are in need of an ink with a, a drier writing experience this might be a good one okay now we're getting into our pinks or my pinks this is Ro Robert Oster rose gilt tint and you can see it's like a pinky kind of ink or color ink and it has rose gold shimmer in there and it's such a pretty ink. I find that I am very reluctant to use shimmery inks just because maybe adding to that laziness I don't like to clean my fountain pens like very thoroughly if I don't have to. So when you use shimmer inks though I believe you do have to clean them a lot more thoroughly than maybe just giving them a quick rinse between color changes. So that's the only reason why I don't use them often. But they are absolutely beautiful. And this is a very good example of one of those types of inks. Sailor, Sailor Shikiori Yozakura. So this one is another pale ink, very pretty. And I do find that if I have a pen with a very fine scratchy nib, this one does not look good in it. It looks almost like I feel like I need glasses, like I can't see whatever the heck I wrote because it comes out way too pale. But a pen that just, you know, puts down a good amount of ink, it's a really pretty color in there. Here's Noodler's Black Swan Australian Roses. This is one of the first inks that I purchased and this was actually before I realized that you could purchase ink samples. Um, this one I was very disappointed with, not because of the ink itself but because I thought it was a different color so I thought that this was more like the Diamine Writer's Blood so I thought it was like a deep burgundy kind of color and clearly it's not a deep burgundy color it's a very nice ink it's just not what I thought I was buying so that is you know a result of my own ignorance I didn't do enough googling enough research before I decided to commit to a full bottle of ink and Pilot Urushizuku Yamabudo, very similar to this one, but better, I would say. This one is, is better. And this one is also sort of like a fan favorite amongst the fountain pen community, if this is a color family that you really do like. Next, I'm getting into my purple inks. And this one actually was a surprise. Like I said, this is the first time I even opened up these small bottles of J. Urban ink that I have and this one's very very pretty it's Poussière de Lune and it's a nice purple 
but just with some interesting shadings going on. And this is another Colorverse ink, and here you can see how pale it does write if you're not if it's not putting down a lot of ink. And this is another one of my favorites, Sailor Shigure Shigure. And this one is a purple kind of ink. Even though here I feel like on the camera it looks a little bluish. And now we get into my gray inks. This one is Diamine Silver Fox. And I went through a love affair of gray inks for a bit and I picked up quite a few samples. Um, I even bought a couple of full bottles. I really am enamored by those gray inks that almost look like you're writing with a pencil. I find them very interesting and really cool. This one is much lighter than I thought it would be. And the sun is moving. Let me see if I can kind of fix that lighting a bit. Okay, that's a little bit better. So this is one that um, turned out to be a lot paler than I thought it would be. Here's Colorverse under the shade. And then a very nice pilot. This is what I would consider gray with some blue undertones. Very pretty. And this is Diamine Earl Gray. I do have a full bottle of this one. This is one that I really do like. It almost has some purplish undertones, but not quite. Some purple bluish kind of undertones and in the right pen. It does look very close to a black or darker ink. Oh, this one is also one of my favorites, Pilot Urushizuku Kiri Same. A very crisp, clear gray. No mistaking it, that's a gray ink. And like I said, it gives me pencil vibes when I do write with it. Oh, and another favorite. <laughs> I think most of these inks are my favorites, which is why they're in my collection. So this is Sailor Shikiori Chushu. This is a gray with very purpley kind of undertones. This is my go-to gray ink. Not one of the ones that looks like you're writing with a pencil, but still, I do love it. And Noodler's Lexington Gray. This one looks very close to black in the right pen. But it's one that I would choose if I have it in a pen that needs more of a wetter ink. And now we're in the black. So this is Pirate of Rushizuku Takesume. I do have a bottle of this and I believe I purchased this before falling in love with Diatramentis Document Ink. Um, I am particular about black inks. Aside from the fact that I want them to dry quickly, I want them to be super, super dark. So this one I found wasn't as dark as I wanted it to be, but it's perfectly fine. It's a really good black ink. It flows extremely well because it's a pilot ink, so I do recommend this one. It is not, however, waterproof, so you can't highlight over it if you need it to. And then Noodler's Borealis Black. I believe it said that you should be able to highlight over this. I can't recall. I abandoned using it. This was um, along with the other Noodler's Australian Roses. This was a the other first ink purchase of mine. Um, and the reason why I abandoned it is because it takes forever to dry. So that I do not like. That requires me to always have to use blotting paper with it. And um, just not about that life most times. But a nice deep dark black if you're interested. And then Platinum Carbon Black is also a very good dark black. I would say it's slightly darker than the Diatramentus Document Ink. However, it does have a longer drying time. Also, um, this Platinum Ink is a pigment based ink. So I believe what that means, it's made up of pigments, not dyes. So if you're not careful, these pigments can clog your pen. So you just want to clean it regularly, clean your fountain pens and flush them regularly. And you can see it has a little bit of sheening too, which is pretty cool and I'm sure based on the fact that it's a pigment ink. And then this is my Diatramentus document ink. Again, it is archival safe, it is waterproof, and it's a very nice ink and it dries almost immediately. So it's really great on Tummel River paper and especially if you are left-handed. And that's it. Th that's all of the inks that I have in my collection. 
those are all of my inks and I am really glad to have it set up in this system so that I can come here and look at swatches and compare colors next to each other I feel like this is very handy and very useful for the way I use my fountain pens and my inks and since I've set this up I've actually used it quite a bit I wanted a gray ink in this pen in particular when I started using it when I switched from my pilot vanishing point I still wanted to keep a gray ink in here but I wanted one that was really dark so I flipped to my gray samples and I picked the one that I felt would look the best in my everyday planner with my everyday writing and if you're interested the one that I picked is I believe it's Dining Earl Grey so yes the one that I did choose to use is Earl Grey in this pen and it was very handy to be able to compare all of my gray shades against one another to see which would be the perfect one for me so that sums up my current fountain pen ink collection like i said i do fully intend to have more follow-up videos talking about all of my inks i'll have follow-up videos showing how i've set up this notebook that i have in the back and any of my currently inked videos and information will be coming up as well so if you don't want to miss any of those please feel free to subscribe thank you so much for watching today's video and i'll see you in the next one